Hello guys, in this video, we will understand Vuforia's multi-target feature and then we will capture images for a multi-target. Multi-target, as the name suggests, consists of multiple image targets that are in cuboid arrangement. The multi-target feature of Vuforia is generally used to recognize cuboid objects. So that's why in multi-target, we need six images, each representing one side of a box. So, for testing out this multi-target feature, you will need a cuboid box. You can use a cornflakes box, a mobile smartphone box or a massager box like this one as I'll be using. So, any box which has 6 sides, you can use it. After selecting a box, next we have to be clear with the width, height and the length values. Because depending on these values, we will get a front, back, left, right, top and bottom sides. If I place the box in this manner, then the width, height and length position values will change. Now I'll be testing the output by placing the box in this manner. So this side will be my front, this side is the top, this is the left, right, back and finally this is the bottom side. After understanding the sides, next you need to measure the width, height and length values of the box. In my case, this box has a width of 12 cm, height of 11.6 cm and a length of 15.4 cm. After measuring the width, height and length values, next we need to capture images of the six sides of the box. For capturing these images, I'll be using the cam scanner application as it has a feature which will help us in cropping the images properly. You can download this app from the App Store or the Play Store depending on your smartphone. Other than Cam Scanner, if you want to download and use any other application, then you can go ahead and do that as well. The only problem of capturing images with Cam Scanner is that Cam Scanner will show a small watermark at one corner of the image. Okay? Now, if you have images which are of white color, then this watermark may not be that much visible as this watermark also has a white color. But if you have a box which is like completely blue or completely black, then this watermark can make a small difference. Okay? Now, if you're downloading and installing the cam scanner application, then the procedure for capturing images is as follows. So after opening the app, click on the camera icon. Next, keep your box on a flat surface. Place your smartphone exactly on top of the box and then click on the capture button to capture this image. Next adjust these points as per the edges of the image and then click on the check button to crop out the unnecessary part. You can then go ahead and name this particular image batch. After this you can open this image and on top you can click on the input page title and give a title or a name to this image. Next, for capturing the second image, click on the camera icon again and then take the picture of the second surface. Crop out the unnecessary part and save this image. You can go ahead and name this particular image as well. So after capturing two images, I'll click on the camera icon again and I'll capture the remaining four images. After capturing all these images, next transfer this image in your laptop and then keep all the images in one single folder. Now even though we have captured all the 6 images, we cannot upload them inside of Euphoria database as the dimensions of each of this image will be different. So in the next video, we will modify the dimensions of these six images so that they are fit to be uploaded as Vuforia multi-targets. Hello guys, in this video, we will modify the dimensions of these six images so that they are fit to be uploaded as multi-targets inside a Vuforia multi-target database. 
Now on my desktop, as you can see, I've created this multi-target folder and inside the multi-target folder, I have the cam scanner images folder inside which I've stored these six images. If I move back, then inside the same folder, I also have the Canva images and the final images folder. Both these folders are currently empty. So after converting these images from the cam scanner images folder, we will store the resulting values inside the Canva images folder as well as the final images folder. Now, if we look at the box closely, then it is quite clear that is the width and height of the top side will be exactly equal to the width and height of the bottom side. Similarly, the left side of the box will have the same dimension as that of the right side. And finally, the front side of the box will have the same dimensions as that of the back side. Now, these six images only have two dimensions, that is the width and height as compared to the three dimensions of the box. So to better understand the relation of these 2D images with the 3D box, I have created this small image along with an easy to understand chart. So this is the image and this image, as you can see, consists of the top, left, front, right and the back image. So using this particular image, we will try to convert the 3D width, height and length value of our box into 2D width and height values of our images. So first, if we look at the top image, then in the real world, the top side consisted of a width and length. But as a 2D image, this image consists of a width, but the length will be converted to height. So for the top and the bottom images, the width will be 12 centimeters and the height will be 15.4 centimeters. That is the length, which was 15.4 is converted to height of 15.4 as a 2D image. Next, if we look at the front and the back image, then in the real world, the front side and the back side consisted of width and height. So that's why there will be no change inside these front and the back images as well. So from this chart, you can see that the front and the back images will have a width of 12 centimeters and a height of 11.6 centimeters. If we look at the left and the right images, then in the real world, the left side and the right side consisted of the length and the height values. But as a 2D image, this length value will be converted to width and the height values will remain as it is. So from this figure, you can see that the left and right images will have a width of 15.4 as the length is converted to width and it will have a height of 11.6. So I hope from this image, you would have understood the relation between the 3D box values and these 2D images values. I have also created this small cuboid chart and you can use this chart as a reference for your further 3D cuboid models. Okay, so after finding the width, length and height values of the box, you can just enter the width, length and height values over here. And depending on the width, length and height values, you can find the width and height values for the top, bottom, front, back and left and right images. Next, we will convert these centimeter values into pixel values as in a computer pixel is the unit for measuring the width and height of an image. So for converting the centimeter values into pixel values for these six images, I'll be using the Canva website. Now the reason why I'm choosing the Canva website is because in Canva we have the option to create a custom image by setting centimeter as a unit. Okay, so you can choose pixel, inches, millimeters and centimeters. Okay, now since we want to convert the centimeter values into pixels, so I'll set this unit to centimeters. After this, we'll be creating three sets of images. The first set of image will have a width of 12 and a height of 15.4. The second set of image will have a width of 12 and a height of 11.6 and the final set of image will have a width of 15.4 and a height of 11.6. So first I'll set the width to 12 and I'll set the height to 15.4. Now make sure that you set this unit to centimeters. After this I'll click on the create new design button. 
Next, I'll click on this uploads option. And over here, I'll drag these six images. Now, since the width and height of 12 centimeters by 15.4 centimeters is for the top and bottom image. So over here inside this canvas, I'll drag the top as well as the bottom image. So this is my top image. So I'll drag it near the canvas. Okay. Now when the image is very near to the canvas, Canva will automatically set the image as the background image. So now this image is set as the background image. Okay. And Canva has made sure that the image is stretched properly, horizontally as well as vertically. After this, I'll click on add a new page button to add a new page. I'll delete this duplicate copy and in this second canvas, I'll drag the bottom image. So both the images are fitted over here. After this, I'll name this file as top bottom. Now I'm not naming these two images because when we download them, they will by default have a number one and number two. After this, I'll go in Canva again. Okay. I'll close this thing. I'll close this image as well. And I'll just open this specific image. The next dimensions, which we have to set is 12 and 11.6. That is for the front and back image. So over here, I'll set 11.6. I'll then click on create new design. I'll go in uploads again. And this time I'll first drag the front image. So this is my front image. Next, I'll click on add new page button. And next I'll drag the back image. Okay. But this time before setting the back image as the background, I'll need to rotate it. Okay. I'll just stretch the width and height of the image accordingly. So after setting the front and the back image as the background image, I'll name this file as front back. Next, I'll set the third custom dimension to 15.4 and 11.6 in my case. Okay. And this specific dimension, is for the left and the right image. I'll go in uploads again. And over here, I'll first drag the left image. So this is my left image. I'll need to rotate it by 90 degrees. I'll then stretch it along the width and the height. I'll click on add new page button. I'll drag the right image and I'll stretch it along its width and height as well. Okay. I'll name this specific file as left, right. After this, I'll go inside the top bottom file and then I'll click on the download button to download it. Now, since there are two images inside this file, so both these images will be downloaded inside a zip file. I'll download the front back file as well. And finally, I'll download the left right file. Okay. Now you don't need to make any changes over here. You can just keep these settings as it is. Okay. And then you can click on the download button. Next I'll copy these three zip files inside the Canva images folder. So I've copied the three zip files inside the Canva images folder. Next I'll unzip and rename them. So first I'll unzip the front back image. I'll rename these images to front and back. Similarly, I'll unzip and rename the images inside the left, right and the top bottom zip file. After unzipping and renaming the images, I'll just delete these three zip files. So now these six images, which we have got from the Canva website are scaled down proportionally as per the aspect ratio. That is if I open the top image and the front image, then you will notice that both of them will have the same width. So if I open the properties of the front image, and as I said, if I open the properties of the top image, then over here, you will notice 
that both of them have the same width okay and over here as well the top bottom and the front back image had the same width of 12 centimeters similarly if i open the front back or the left right image then both of them will have the same height so first i'll open the front image that is i'll open the properties of the front image next i'll open the properties of the left image and if we compare both the properties then the front and the left image okay i'll just reduce the size of this a little bit and as i was saying the front and the left image have the same height so these six images are scaled proportionally as per the aspect ratio and they are ready to be uploaded inside a vuforia database but there is one small problem and that problem is that if i go inside the details of any of this image then you will notice that all the images will have a bit depth of 32 bit and vuforia does not accept images which has a bit depth of 32 bit it only accepts images which has a bit depth of 24 bit so if you check all the images from canva then you will notice that all of them will have a bit depth of 32 bit so now from here we can do two things first you can check for any online software which can convert this 32 bit into 24 bit and then you can upload the 24 bit images inside of euphoria database or the second option is that we can open the cam scanner images and we change the dimensions of these six images as per the dimensions of these canva images as these canva images which we have are scaled proportionally according to the centimeter values now out of these two options i'll select the second option that is i'll change the dimension of these cam scanner images okay because first if i check the properties of the cam scanner images and if i go in details then these images have a bit depth of 24 bit okay which is fine with vuforia so as i was saying the reason why i'm choosing the second option is that i have checked some online softwares or online tools using which we can convert the 32 bit images into 24 bit images okay but i didn't find any specific results for that okay so that's why i'll rescale the width and height of the cam scanner images as per the width and height of the canva images so to rescale the width and height of these images i'll use a software called photoscape so this is the software which i'll be using now to download photoscape you can just google photoscape download and you will get this first link which says photoscape.org so you can click on it and from here you can download the photoscape software okay so this software is available for windows and mac now inside the photoscape software first as i said i'll first drag the back image okay i'll go in canva images and let's see what are the dimensions of the back image so if i go in properties then the back image has a width of 454 and a height of 438 so for scaling the back image i'll first make sure that i'm inside the home tab and inside home tab there is this resize option so i'll click on it and after this i'll change the width to 438 and i'll change the height to 454 okay now make sure that you uncheck this preserve aspect ratio okay if this is checked then the height will keep changing as per the width that is the software will make sure that the width and height is preserved when any of the two values are changed after this i'll hit okay next if you remember i had rotated the back image by 180 degrees so i'll rotate it by using this rotate tool after this i'll save the image so to save the image i'll click on control s i'll then click on save as now inside the multi target folder if you remember i had created this final images folder so inside final images i'll first save the back image i'll click okay 
So now if I open the final images folder, then it contains this back image. And you will notice that this back image will have the dimension of 438 by 454, which is the dimension of the images which we downloaded from Canva. But most important, it will also have a bit depth of 24. Next, I'll open the cam scanner images folder. I'll drag the bottom image. I'll check the width and height of the bottom image, which is inside the Canva images folder. So this image has a width of 454 and a height of 582. So I'll click on the resize button. I'll click OK. After this, I'll click on save as and I'll save the bottom image inside the final images folder. Similarly, I'll drag the remaining four images and I'll change the width and height as per the Canva images width and height. So guys, I finished changing the dimensions of the images which were inside the cam scanner images folder and the resulting output of the cam scanner images folder, I've stored it inside the final images folder. So basically the cam scanner images folder consisted of the 24 bit images, which we can upload inside of Euphoria database. But the problem with these images is that all of them have a random width and height values. So for getting the exact width and height values as per the proper aspect ratio, we uploaded these images inside Canva and then from Canva, we downloaded these images, which had the proper aspect ratio as per the width and height. But the problem with these Canva images was that they had a bit depth of 32 bit, which is not accepted by Euphoria. So to tackle this problem, we had created these six images by rescaling these six images from the cam scanner images folder. So after rescaling these six images, I'll end this video over here as this video has become way too big. Okay. And in the next video, we will create a multi-target database inside Euphoria, and then we will upload these six images inside a multi-target. Hello guys, in this video, we will upload these six images inside a cuboid target. And after that, I'll explain you some of the features of the cuboid target. So currently I've already gone ahead and created a new Euphoria database by the name of multi-target. This multi-target database is of the device type. Okay. And in this multi-target database, we will create a cuboid target. So for creating the cuboid target, I'll click on add target button. I'll select the cuboid option. Next, we need to set the width, height and length values. Okay. Now the width, length and height value, which we specify over here should be in meters. So the box, which I'm using has a width of 12 centimeters. So 12 centimeters is equivalent to 0.12 meter. Next, it has a height of 11.6 centimeters which is 0.116. And finally, it has a length of 15.4 centimeters, which is 0.154. After this, I'll give this cuboid target a name of cuboid box. I'll then click on the add button. The cuboid box target is created. Okay. Its type is cuboid. The rating is not set right now and the status is incomplete as we have not uploaded images inside a cuboid box. So to upload images, I'll click on the cuboid box. Now on the left hand side, you can see the 3d representation of the box. Okay. And on the right hand side, we have these options to upload the six images. So first I'll upload the front image by clicking on the upload front option. I'll then hit browse. Okay. Now I'm inside the final images folder and from the final images folder, I'll select the front image. I'll then click open. I'll then hit upload. 
So the front image is uploaded and you can also see the front image been displayed inside this 3D representation. After this, I'll upload the left image. Okay, but before uploading the image, you can see over here, this text basically says that the file which we upload should be of 8-bit or 24-bit PNG or JPEG file. Okay, so this is the reason why we are not using the Canva images as Canva images are of 32-bit. Okay. And just for instance, if I go inside the Canva image and if I select the left PNG image from here and if I click on the upload button, then I'll get an error over here, which will say that we are not able to upload the image. So as you can see, an error occurred while uploading the image, please try later. And this error is because of the 32 bit image format. So I'll click on browse again. I'll go inside final images. I'll select the left image. I'll then click upload. So the left image is uploaded and you can also see the left image inside this 3D representation. Okay. Next I'll go ahead and I'll upload the top, back, right and the bottom images. So I've uploaded all the six images and inside this 3D representation, you can see the images are visible properly. Now, one of the things which you should take proper care is that the images are visible clearly because sometimes there are chances that some of the image may appear upside down. Okay. Or maybe the dimensions are correct, but the image is not appearing properly over here. Like instead of appearing like this, this image may appear upside down. Okay. So if that thing happens, then the camera will not be able to recognize your cuboid box properly. Okay. So after uploading this image, next, if I click on this 3d representation box, then you'll be able to look at a single image properly. So currently the front image is open and this front image has an augmentation of five stars. Okay which basically means that this front image will be detected very clearly by the camera. Next, if I click on the show features, then you can see the features of this front image. After this, if I check the next image, which is the left image, then the left image has four stars, which is quite good. The right image has five stars, which is again good. Now the top image has three stars. Okay. So while scanning the top image, I may end up facing some problems. If I check the bottom image, then the bottom image, since the bottom image is completely white. So that's why the bottom image has no stars, but that's completely fine with me as the bottom image will not be scanned by the camera because it is at the bottom. Finally, if I check the back image, then the back image also has a good augmentation of five stars. So after checking the augmentation of each of the images, next I'll go inside multi-target again. I'll select the keyword option. Okay. And this time you can see the status of the keyword is active as we have uploaded all the six images. Okay. Previously, if you would have noticed the status was showing as incomplete. Okay. So after checking the checkbox for the cuboid, I'll click on the download database button. I'll select the unity editor and I'll download this cuboid box target. So the multi-target database is downloaded as unity package. So after downloading this particular database, I'll end this video over here. And in the next video, we will work with this multi-target unity package. Hello guys, in this video, we will import the multi-target database inside our Unity project. And after this, we will display the Barbarian model on top of the multi-target box.
So in this multi-target project, as you can see, I've already gone ahead and created a new Unity project by the name of Vuforia Multi-Target. After this, inside Build Settings, I have switched the platform to Android. Next, inside Player Settings, I've checked the Vuforia Augmented Reality Support checkbox. After this, I have resaved the sample scene by a new name of Multi-Target Scene and this Multi-Target Scene is inside Data Files and Scenes folder. Next, from this multi-target scene, I've deleted the main camera and I've added the AR camera by clicking on Create, Euphoria Engine and then selecting the AR camera option from here. Next, inside AR camera, I have gone inside Euphoria configurations and over here, I've pasted the AR one license key. So this is the license key which I've pasted over here. Next, for displaying the Barbarian model on top of a multi-target, I'll first import this multi-target Unity package which we downloaded in the previous video. So I'll double click on this to import it. I'll then click on the import button. So the Unity package is imported. Next, I'll click on the create dropdown. After this, I'll go in Vuforia engine. And now for working with multi-targets, I'll select the multi-image option. And as soon as I clicked on the multi-image option, you can see the multi-target box inside a scene panel. After this, if I open the multi-target game object, then it contains a child target game object. And if I open the child target game object, then you will see that this particular game object consists of six planes. And each plane represents one side of the box. So if I click on the cuboid box dot left, then this represents the left side of the box. If I click on the top, then this game object represents the top side of the box. Okay, next I'll collapse the child target. I'll select the multi-target. Okay. After this, I'll rotate this multi-target by 90 degrees along the x-axis. So to do this, I'll select the rotation tool and then I'll rotate it 180 degrees. Okay, I'll change the exact value to minus 90 over here. So after rotating this box by 90 degrees along the X axis, we can now see the top side of the box on the top side. The front side is at the front, back side is at the back and the left and right side are at the respective position. Okay, after this we'll display the barbarian model on top of this particular multi-target. So from the asset store, you can download the Barbarian model or the Barbarian Warrior model. Now, if you remember, this is the same model which we had used for our AR1 project. So just click on the import button and then import this model inside a project. Now I've already gone ahead and downloaded this Barbarian model. So on my desktop, you can see this Barbarian folder. So I'll open it. Next, I'll open the models folder and I'll drag the Barbarian model inside the hierarchy. Now, since the scale of this multi-target is way too small when compared with a Barbarian model. So that's why I'll select the Barbarian model and I'll reduce the scale of it. Next, I'll zoom in. I'll move the Barbarian model on top. Okay. Now, since this is the front side of the box and since I'll be projecting the camera on top of the box from the front side, so I'll just rotate this barbarian model by 180 degrees along the y-axis. Next, I'll make the barbarian model a child of multi-target. After this, I'll add some animations to this barbarian model. So to add animation, I'll click on the select button. Next, I'll go inside rig. And inside rig, by default, you will notice that the animation type will be humanoid. So change this from humanoid to legacy. Next, we'll go inside the animations tab. And inside animations, you will actually see these many animations which are a part of the barbarian model. So out of all the animations, I'll just select the round kick animation. Then I'll scroll down, I'll change the wrap mode from default to loop and then I'll hit apply. So basically when we change the wrap mode to loop, so the barbarian model will keep looping this round kick animation. Okay. So after this, I'll select the barbarian model again and from the animation, which is by default set to idle. I'll click on the circle and I'll change the animation to round kick. 
So after making these changes, I'll click on the play button to test the output. So now as you can see, when the webcam recognizes this box, the barbarian model is displayed on top of it and it is performing the round kick animation. Okay. So I'll come out of play mode. So guys, after testing the output of the barbarian model, I'll end this video over here. And in the next video, we'll try to customize this multi-target scene a little bit more. Hello guys, in this video, we will customize a multi-target scene by making one barbarian model stand on top of a turntable which will be placed on top of a box. One more barbarian model will run circle around the box and finally will also add some fire effects inside the scene. Before starting this video, let me share a couple of things. Now one of the primary applications of multi-target is displaying more information about a particular item by just scanning its cuboid box. So that even if the item is not visible, the user can find more information about the item by just scanning its box. Now the box which I have is a massager box. So if I had a free massager 3D model, then I could have created a scene in which I could have shown the working of a massager in augmented reality. But since I don't have a massager model, so I'll just assume that this box contains a barbarian model and using augmented reality, I'll try to explain the user what he will get in this box. In the same manner, if suppose you had a toy car box, then you can display a car 3D model on top of the box so that the user can actually see the car in 3D before he ends up purchasing the real car. Now, for this particular video, you will need to download two assets from the asset store. So the first asset which you will need to download from the asset store is the elemental magic totems. And the second asset which you will need to download is the turntable platforms. Okay. Now, since we cannot open multiple tabs inside the asset store, so that's why I went to the asset store website from my Chrome browser. And I've shown you the two assets which you will need to download. Both these assets are free. Now I've already gone ahead and downloaded these two assets. So over here, I have this turntables platform folder. And for the second asset, I have this elemental magic totems folder. After downloading these assets, next we'll create a platform on top of which a barbarian model will stand. Okay. So for creating the platform, I'll open the turntables platform folder. Next I'll open prefabs. I'll then open platforms. Now inside the platforms folder, you can find that there are four platform models, which you can choose. So I'll currently choose the fourth platform model. I'll reset it to a position of zero. Now, since the scale of this model is way too big, I'll just shrink it down. I'll make the platform four child of multi-target. I'll zoom in a little bit more. Next, I'll reduce the barbarian size a little bit and I'll place him on top of this platform. After this, I'll duplicate the same platform and I'll bring it at the bottom of this box. Okay. I'll increase the scale of this a little bit. So I'll keep the scale to around 0 0.2. Next, I'll bring this platform down. I'll make sure that this particular box is resting on top of this second platform. After this, I'll select this barbarian model and I'll click on control D to duplicate it. I'll place the second barbarian model down over here. After this, to add some fire effects, I'll open the elemental magic totems folder. Next, I'll open the prefabs folder and inside the prefabs folder, 
you can find these four prefabs and each prefab has its own custom animation okay so i'll use this particular fire totem prefab and i'll currently drag it inside the hierarchy i'll reset it to a position of zero i'll reduce its scale now since when we zoom out we are seeing the camera and this particle gizmo so i'll just click on this gizmo's drop down and i'll uncheck this 3d icon so that the camera gizmo does not become an obstacle for us while we make the editing i'll select the pfb totem model i'll reduce the scale of this a little bit more and i'll place it on one side of the box So I'll place it somewhere over here. Next, I'll duplicate this prefab model again. And I'll place the second prefab on the right hand side. I'll duplicate this model again. And I'll place at the back over here. I'll rotate this model along the Y axis. Finally, I'll duplicate this model one more time and I'll place one at the back over here. So after making these changes, I'll select these four prefabs and I'll make them child of the multi-target. Next, to test the output, I'll click on the play button. I'll now scan the multi-target box. So as soon as the box is scanned, you can see the two barbarian models performing round kick animation on top of the respective platforms. Now since the second barbarian model is duplicated from the first one, so that's why it's copying the round kick animation which we have assigned to this particular model. Okay. You can also see fire effects coming out from this fire tome prefab. Next, we'll apply the run animation to this barbarian model and we'll make sure that this barbarian model runs around this bottom platform. Okay. So to apply the run animation, I'll select the second barbarian model, which is at the bottom. Okay. Or before applying the animation, I'll just rename both these barbarian models. So the barbarian model, which is at the bottom, I'll rename it as barbarian bottom and the barbarian model which is on the top i'll rename it as barbarian top after this i'll select the barbarian bottom model i'll click on select now inside animation tab i'll select the run animation i'll change the wrap mode to loop so that the run animation runs in a loop i'll then hit apply after this i'll select barbarian bottom i'll click on the circle and i'll change the animation to run after changing the animation, I'll click on the play button just to check if the animation is working properly. So this second barbarian model is now performing the run animation. After this, we'll make this barbarian model run around this second platform. Okay. And to do this, we'll create an empty game object. Now I'll rename this empty game object as run object. Now with the run object selected, I'll reset its position to zero. Okay. After this, I'll make the run object a child of the multi-target. Next, I'll make the barbarian model a child of the run object. Okay. And after this, we will write a program to rotate the run object by 90 degrees along the Y axis. And when the run object rotates by 90 degrees along the Y axis, this barbarian model will also move and since we have applied the run animation to this barbarian model so it will seem as if this barbarian model is running around this platform okay so next i'll go inside the assets folder i'll open data files after this i'll create a new folder inside this i'll name it scripts 
next i'll create a new c sharp script i'll give the script a name of barbarian run i'll then open the script now inside the script i'll first declare a vector 3 variable i'll name it vect i'll initialize it inside the update function as well so i'll put equal to new vector 3 now since we have to rotate the game object along the y axis so i'll set the x and z value to 0 and i'll set the y value to 30 after this for rotating the game object i'll write transform dot rotate inside this i'll put the vect variable i'll then multiply it by time dot delta time after this i'll hit ctrl s and i'll save the script next i'll attach this barbarian run script to the run object so i'll drag the script on the run object Okay, so the script is not attached to run object. So with run object selected, I'll just drag the script inside the inspector panel of the run object. Okay, so after making these changes, next I'll click on the play button to test the output. So you can see that this barbarian model is moving, but instead of moving forward, it is moving in the backward direction. So to solve this problem, we just have to make one small change and that change is to add minus over here. Okay. So I'll save the script. I'll then click on the play button again. And this time, if I scan the multi target, then you can see that the second barbarian model is moving in the correct direction but most importantly it is running around this square box now since the webcam is attached to my laptop and since my laptop is further attached to the entire recording setup so that's why i can't move the camera around this box okay but i can definitely build and run this application inside my android smartphone and i can then move my android smartphone around the box so for building this application for an Android device, I'll click on file, build settings. I'll add this open scene inside the build settings. Next, I'll click on player settings. Now inside player settings, in place of company name, I'll just put my name over here. Now I'll keep the resolution and presentation to auto rotation. After this, I'll go in other settings. Over here, I'll change the package name. So in place of company name, I'll just put my own name and in place of product name, I'll put the application name that is Vuforia multi-target. Next, I'll change the minimum API level to Marshmallow. After this, I'll just uncheck this Android TV compatibility and after making the necessary changes, next I'll just click on the build button. I'll give this file a name of multi-target and next I'll click on the save button to create this apk file. Once the apk file is generated, I'll copy and install it inside my android smartphone and finally we'll test the output inside the android smartphone. I hope you would have liked this free video from one of my augmented reality course which is currently the best selling AR course on Udemy for over 2 years now. With over 15 hours of pure AR content, one can understand why 7500 students from more than 131 countries have enrolled in this course. In this course, you will first detect markers and develop applications such as AR book. AR greeting card and AR business card. You will also learn to detect 3D objects, cylindrical targets, cloud databases, cuboid boxes, picture frames, ground surfaces and much more. The AR course is currently priced at $200.
but as a subscriber of this channel, you can get it at a discounted price of only $10 by clicking on the link in the description. You can click on the same link to check the promo video for this course and then decide whether you want to purchase this course or not. So guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos like these.